meteorologist Mark Molnar. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. Things are getting really crazy here. We have a lot to talk about. The tropics, uh, Fred, Grace, and Henry. We have three named storms now. This is getting crazy, people. And guess what? The eastern part of the country is under the gun here. The Gulf is open for business. The Caribbean's open for business, and so is the Atlantic. It's all coming together for a big boom here along the east. And this is going to come in the form of lots of, of course, uh, storm shirts just going on with Fred and whatnot. Grace has weakened a little bit, but is going to re-strengthen. And Henry is our newest name storm by Bermuda. And Fred is going to be causing a lot of flooding up through the Appalachians into parts of the northeast and into the Susquehanna River Valley. I'm going to have more details on that later in the video here. And then guess what? Severe weather. I'll go over all that with you. Heat continuing across North America. As always, check my hurricane video down below if you haven't visited that yet. The link down below. Don't forget to smash the like, subscribe button, smash the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. As always, comment or question below. Let's get right into this. And here we go, zooming in a little bit closer. We pretty much have all three storms here on the tracker. And there's Henry doing a little dance around Bermuda over the next several days. Uh, there's Grace. That's the one I'm really going to watch. That's going to head just south of uh, Cuba here, eventually affecting the Yucatan Peninsula and maybe impacting northern Mexico slash southern Texas here as a hurricane. Um, so this is a big wild card here. The cone of uncertainty is pretty high, especially once we get past the Yucatan Peninsula. And there, Fred heading up inland, causing lots of problems with rainfall here across the eastern part of the U.S. Taking a look at the tropics, it is Fred heading inland, being a big rainmaker. We've got Grace near the island of Hispaniola moving away and will strengthen, could become a hurricane in the Gulf by the end of the week here. And we have Henry out by Bermuda, and then we have another tropical system, a tropical wave, a potential uh, disturbance coming off the coast of Africa that has a chance of development over the next three to five days out here in the open Atlantic. Uh, Fred is going to be that big rainmaker across uh, parts of the southeast and eventually the Appalachians into the northeast. Then we have Henry going to dance around Bermuda. We'll see if it potentially can swing back towards the east coast. And Grace is the big wild card here, potentially becoming a first hurricane in quite some time here across the Atlantic Basin uh, into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this system does have the potential to either affect Mexico and Texas. You're not out of the woods of this either. So we're going to take a look at this, and I'll break it all down here for you. And that system off coming off the coast of Africa. And here in the Gulf, the only thing we have to talk about is landfalling Fred. Look at that, heading well inland here. All that deep tropical moisture streaming to the north and to the northeast. Going to be a lot of inland flooding here as Fred, Fred's impacts are going to be well up the Appalachians into the northeast. And taking a look at the tropics here across the Atlantic, you have Fred there making landfall in Florida. Look at that big slug of moisture. You also have tropical depression um, grace here uh, near the western tip of the island of Hispaniola really starting to look as it gets away from the island. This thing's going to really start to develop here. And then out in the Atlantic uh, towards Bermuda, you have Henry. And then look at that, the intertropical convergence zone. We have a big wave coming off of Africa. We got to watch this. This things are exploding in the tropics. And taking a look at the GFS here, uh, GFS is very pronounced uh, when it comes to Fred, continuing as well, going up the Appalachians into Pennsylvania and New York State for Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and also, GFS is much further south with Grace. You see it doesn't even appear on the screen here. It stays over the Yucatan Peninsula. That's a big difference between the CMC and the GFS. And then look at Henry. The GFS holds Henry on longer and makes it a potential, maybe a pop potential threat to the east coast we'll have to watch for this so there's some uh this is a very weak steering current environment so we'll have to watch it here at media marks weather eastern we're taking a look at the nam uh we have uh, this is through thursday we have the initial batch of showers and thunderstorms moving through on tuesday and earlier wednesday and then you see fred moving up a uh, later during the day on wednesday across western pennsylvania and then across central pennsylvania and wednesday evening across upstate New York. That big band 
of heavy red feeder band that moves right up the Susquehanna River Valley. This is what is of very much of worry of causing a lot of flash flooding and flooding across the Susquehanna region of Pennsylvania and upstate New York. Taking a look at the CMC here uh, for the surface lows, you can see, first of all, here's Fred heading well inland up the Appalachians. You can see where it really starts to explode it once again uh, Wednesday night across Pennsylvania and parts of New York State. So you can see this system is a bit of a concern here, especially when it's going to interact with the front. You can see Grace. Look at this. This is why I think Texas isn't completely out of the woods. See how the CMC kind of hooks Grace up and just clips ever so slightly south uh, Texas there. And then, of course, we have Henry uh, dancing around Bermuda out there. Taking a look at the NAM, this is really puzzling to me, although this is not the first time I've seen this out of the NAM. It, these inland tropical systems interacting with frontal boundaries within a tro uh, precipitation enhancements, I've seen this happen several times in the past, especially with the uh, 2011 Tropical Storm Lee across the northeast, which is a similar path to this. It actually is putting the axis of the heaviest precipitation west of the center of circulation, which really bodes well in a cold core system, but this is a warm core system interacting with a cold front, a stationary front. So I think right now this axis is a bit further west than it should be, and it's not in agreement with the other models. So I think right now this should be a bit further east. And taking with the GFS's accumulated precipitation, it's a little bit behind the CMC, but it's the exact general idea as well. It's a widespread area of, you see the purples there, that's anywhere from like three all the way up to six inches with locally higher amounts likely. So uh, these models tend to over underdo things, but there is the general idea that I'm concerned about. And here we go, the CMC model. Uh, now, as I said before, models tend to underdo these kind of scenarios with inland tropical systems interacting with frontal boundaries. Uh, but we're getting the good idea here. Look at this. This is one of the. This is the model that's really, really uh, out ahead of the rest of the models when it comes to rainfall totals, um, because it's it's forecasting some higher totals here that I'm more in agreement with. And you can see um, across Georgia all the way up through Pennsylvania and into New York State. There, that's where we have the problem. There's that band on the eastern side of Fred as it moves up the Appalachians into parts of the Northeast all the way to Thursday. And some of these rainfall totals you can see in those darker purples, that's getting up into the 6-inch plus range there uh, easily. So this is this gives you a good idea. And here it is, upper air pattern across North America. We'll slowly start to see that ridge out west, but slowly start to break down, which is good news. Hopefully we can get some relief here in parts of the west. It's back east where all the tropical troubles are here. We are dealing with Fred, which will be moving well inland up the eastern North American continent. We have Henry just off the coast near Bermuda. And then we have Grace that could be becoming a hurricane here in the Gulf of Mexico and heading west towards Mexico. But Texas, you're not completely out of the woods as of yet. And Tuesday across the northeast, this is where the problems start, unfortunately. We start to see an influx of moisture from the south and southwest here. Um, this is being tr entrained up into the frontal boundary that's snaked, you know, across to the Appalachians and parts of the northeast here. This is focusing Fred's moisture as it moves up the Appalachians. This is just the beginning, unfortunately. You can see the darker greens here. We're really getting into some of those heavier returns across parts of uh, Virginia, Maryland, uh, Pennsylvania, and upstate New York here, especially um, we're going to be really focusing on central and eastern Pennsylvania and Susquehanna region of upstate New York because I think that's where the eastern side of the storm uh, is going to be and that's where the biggest feeder bands are going to set up as Fred moves up the Appalachians here. It's going to hold the temperatures down into the mid to upper 70s as well. And Tuesday across the southeast will start to uh, slowly move Fred inland here. The moisture will be streaming well north of this. You can see Atlanta really held down 78 for your high as the heavy rains really take over. Heavy rains will be extending all the way up the Appalachians here. That is the big story across the southeast. Thankfully, it looks like Grace will be slowly heading south off the screen here. So 
Um, you'd be dealing with Fred here. Fred's After Effects, the flooding is not. It's, too, it's basically to least to be desired here. Outside of Fred, you can see 95 in Houston, 93 in New Orleans. But the, where you see those darker shade greens, that's where the 3 to 5 inch plus of rain is going to fall. Locally higher amounts to 7 to 10 inches likely. And then Wednesday across the Northeast, this is where things really start to... Uh, You'll have a full sense of security as, you know, there'll be a lull in the action, but later on in the day on Wednesday, the heavier rain really starts to take effect here because the frontal boundary from the south will be moving to the north along with Fred and Fred's center of circulation. Won't be quite on the screen by this point on Wednesday, but uh, the moisture will be streaming north here uh, ahead of it, and this is where it's going to be the focal point. The Susquehanna River Valley, central Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, into the Susquehanna River Valley, into the Catskills. This is where we're going to have some of the biggest problems with this system. And I am expecting an additional, as of Tuesday we were seeing anywhere from a widespread 1 to 2 plus inch, I expect another 1 to 2 inch plus with locally higher amounts to 3 inch plus, especially into central eastern Pennsylvania, into the Susquehanna region of upstate New York. And Wednesday across the southeast, we start to slowly try to clear things out here as Fred is really excruciatingly slow here, continuing to move the moisture well up north across the Appalachians. We start to get really warm places like Tampa, 96, 91 in Miami, 95 in New Orleans, Panama City, 90, and 96 in Houston. Atlanta held down there as long as Wells Rally and up to Norfolk with the rainfall as Fred continues to move towards the northeast. So there you have it. Wednesday night across the northeast. This is where things get pretty ugly. Uh, we've got the stalled out frontal boundary across central Pennsylvania, upstate New York, stretching into southern Ontario. And this is where we've got the access of the heavier precipitation developing as the low pressure, which is the remnants of Fred, moves all up along it to the north-northeast. This will spread that feeder band up Harrisburg, Scranton, Binghamton, like train cars on a railroad track, training heavy rainers, one right after another in a feeder band that just moves over the same area over and over again, looking at additional rainfall accumulations, easily three to six inches, locally higher amounts. So this is where things really start to get ugly. And Wednesday night across the southeast, uh, looking at a much better evening uh, in night uh, across the southeast, then it will be in the across the northeast as Fred as well, northeast of your area. So nice clearing taking effect here across the southeast and looking like a really nice evening to get out there and enjoy. And Thursday across the northeast, here we go. We have Fred continuing to move up along that stalled out frontal boundary. Uh, continuing to focus the heaviest rain from the Susquehanna Valley, spreading eastward across the Hudson Valley into parts of southern New England as well. So this is where we're going to continue to see the heavy rain and the feeder bands on the east side. As I said, we could have a tornado threat Wednesday night into Thursday, uh, the east side of the storm. But the big story is going to be the continued flooding rains that are going to continue on the east side of the remnants of Fred as it interacts with this frontal boundary and Thursday across the southeast here look at this uh clearing things out slowly here chance of a light day shower thunderstorm in these green areas from Miami all the way up to Panama City Birmingham Atlanta Raleigh and Norfolk but this is much quieter than things were so we're really cleaning up after Fred here after Fred's aftermath and we're slowly warming things back up even more tropical here and more humid what more could you ask for during a late summer day. And here it is, Tuesday through Friday, across parts of the Susquehanna region from Binghamton to Scranton's upper Susquehanna River Delta and all points in between. Very bad forecast shaping up here across the area. This is uh, reminiscent of past flood events. Uh, the only saving grace is we have had a stretch of dry weather since our rainiest J July uh, on record for parts of the area. So we're looking at about three quarters of an inch to an inch on Tuesday with showers and thunderstorms developing well ahead of uh, the remnants of Tropical Storm Fred. Uh, interacting with the front as we head into Wednesday as well. Fred will be tracking up across Pennsylvania Wednesday evening and Wednesday night. So we'll have one to two inches additional on Wednesday. Wednesday night is the really key part. What happens Wednesday night here? Probably three to six inches widespread rainfall accumulation in the Susquehanna River Delta Basin here, um, and 0.60 to 80 miles east, give or take a little bit here. So the 
will be interacting with the front, and that is just how strong it interacts with the front. Really determines how much rain, and we don't move the rain out until Friday. Look at this. Thursday, we're continuing with another day as Fred heads off to the northeast. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button, hit the bell button, so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. Let's get to 5,000 subscribers, everybody. Also, don't forget to Facebook me, Meteomark. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern. Also, Twitter at WX Northeastern. You can also visit my websites at Meteomark.com and WeatherNortheastern.com. It'll take you to the same place. Thank you for joining me.